We're on the last lesson of chapter two, which is equations, tables, and graphs. We're going to use equations to create tables and graphs. We're going to use tables to generate graphs in, and then graphs to generate tables. We're going to work backwards at the end. So let's do this. Using equations to generate tables and graphs. We're going to make a table and sketch a graph of the path of a submarine diving at 50 feet per minute. So we're going to go below water. So it's going to go to the negatives, right? Below sea level. The depth of the submarine is represented by the equation d equals negative 50 times m, where d is the depth and then m is the number of minutes. So if the minutes increase, our depth should, should increase too. We should go lower and lower and lower. All right, so for example, we would have m as our input, right? One minute passes two, three, four, right? And then d is our output. So our depth decreases as our minutes increase. So let's do this here. We have negative 50 times m. So if m is 0, it would be negative 50 times 0. Anything times 0 is going to be 0. And it makes sense. After 0 minutes, we haven't dropped into the water yet. Here we have 1 minute has passed. So it would be negative 50 times 1. So after 1 minute, if you're doing 50 feet per minute, it would be negative 50. Here if 2 minutes have passed. So it would be negative 50 times 2. And that would give us negative 100 if you're going to multiply that. Remember, a negative and a positive makes a negative. Here we have 3 times negative 50, so negative 50 times 3. And that would give us a negative answer, negative 150. Here we have negative 50 times 4 now. And that would give us an answer of negative 200. Now we need to create a, a graph of this. We have 0 here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 of our independent variable. And we need to label these here then. We have probably, I'm going to count by 50s because that's what we're doing here. So I'd say negative 50, negative 100, and I'm going to pause. All right, then we're back. So if we're going to graph this then, we would say after one minute, we are at negative 50. Zero minutes, we haven't dropped it, so we'll add zero depth then. So two minutes, we'd be at negative 100. Three minutes would have us at negative 150. Four minutes would be negative 200. And five minutes would be negative 250. And I'm going to do a line here because this isn't a discrete graph. At one and a half minutes, I'm not diving back up to the surface or I'm not going to be anywhere. So it makes sense that I'm going to be continue diving. So this is going to be a continuous graph. Now we need to use this table to make a graph and write the equation then. So we're working a little bit backwards here. We have an input of x as 0 and 0. When it inputs 1, it's 6. 2 is 12. 3 is 18. 4 is 24. So let's place this on here. We can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 for the x's. The y's need to be their own thing here. 24 is the greatest. There's about 6 boxes. So I'm going to cut by 5. So we'll say this is 5. This is 10. And I'm going to pause again. So I counted by 5's here. Now let's plot this out. We have 0 and 0. We have 1 and 6, so a, bit, a little bit above 5. Not precise, but that's close. 2 and 12. 3 and 18, so it'll be between the 15 and 20. Then we have 4 and 24, so almost to the 25, but not quite. All right, so I'm not sure whether to make this discrete or continuous. It doesn't really tell me what the situation is. But we do need to make an equation. An equation is always y equals you know, something times x or x plus something. What are we doing to this x here? We have 1, we have 6. 2 is 12. 3 is 18. 4 is 24. I see it going up by 6 every time. That tells me we're multiplying times 6. So you'd write this like this. y equals 6x. You can multiply 6 times the input to get the output. Now let's use this graph to make a table, then we'll write an equation as well. So for the inputs, let's do 0, we'll do 1, 2, 3, and then 4. So when the input is 0, our output is 1. When the input is 1, the output is 2. When the input is 2, the output is 3. When the input is 3, the output is 4. When the input is 4, the output is Five. All right, so if we're going to write this equation, y equals something times x or something plus x, we would say, hmm, it's going up by one here. 
Okay, see that? It's always one more than x. So that means we're only multiplying this times one, which keeps it itself, but we notice it's always one more than x, right? So we would say y equals x plus one. So add one to the input, you get your output. That makes sense. Add one to zero, you get one. Add one to one, you get two.